Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Bellwether Culture Podcast. My name is Pavin Ball, and we are recording live on stage at Collision Conference 2019 in Toronto. And we are here with a beautiful, beautiful, full-capacity crowd of unbelievable entrepreneurs and technologists and brand leaders. Uh, today, we have an incredible guest. She previously held leadership positions over at Tommy Hilfiger, at Polo Ralph Lauren, at Nike, at HSNI, and most recently, and she's currently the president and CEO of WW, which is formerly Weight Watchers. Everybody, give me a, give a warm welcome and help me introduce Mindy Grossman. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us here. Love that intro. <laughs> I didn't even stumble. That was pretty good. <laughs> um, so you have yet to complete year two over at WW, and you are in the midst of, uh, I guess, one of the most significant corporate rebranding initiatives uh, of modern day, all while kind of going on this innovation crusade within the company. Um, so we are very, very excited to have you on mic with us and talk through this experience about transformational change. Yeah. Uh, so let's get to it, I guess. When we had talked last, it was three years ago for Fashion Is Your Business podcast. And um, at the time, you were finishing up your tenure um, at HSNI. And I, know I had my retail hat on then. And you had your retail hat on. One thing that stuck out about that conversation that we had is what you did initially to actually galvanize your entire organization around you personally. And I want to just give a briefing of that, which was you came in, and instead of kind of, you, you asked, well, what do the employees do on their first day? And they said, well, they go to new employee in orientation. And you went through the orientation process and got to learn the nooks and crannies of what goes into um, the day-to-day -day life of the different uh, folks and the different employees and the roles. Now, how do you approach now this inside-out cultural role and kind of have a connect to your base so that you could actually start making change happen? So I don't believe that you can transform if you don't have a culture aligned against the vision and the purpose of what you need to do. So the first thing you need to do is galvanize your ultimate evangelists for your brand and what you're looking to accomplish. And when I joined Weight Watchers, one of the things that was so powerful to me was we had 18,000 people who all, at their core, believed in the purpose of helping people transform their lives, mm -hmm. which we've been doing. We just had our 56th birthday. Just last year, oh, last uh, week. Last Sorry. week. Yep. Um, and so what we needed to do and what my role needed to be was to really set the vision and the purpose for what this transformation was. To go from, which we will never abdicate, the leading and leader globally in healthy weight loss built on community, but now take it completely further and become the world's everything partner for healthy living and building that. So our new purpose of we inspire healthy habits for real life, for people, for families, community, the world, for everyone, and really democratize what it is we're trying to do around the world, the first people that really needed to own that purpose was our 18,000 evangelists, and that's what we did. And you'll find it interesting. So February 7th last year, uh, we were in Alice Tully Hall, mm -hmm. and we were, we're now a case study on Facebook Workplace. We live streamed a uh, one and a half hour presentation to all 18,000 employees. And right before that, we made the decision to also make that available to the rest of the world. But what was so powerful, it wasn't an investor presentation. It wasn't a business presentation. It was our presentation internally mm -hmm. that we allowed people access to so they could see our culture, they could understand our purpose and the impact we want to make on the world. And that was a very telling moment for our company. 
do you feel going almost into two years into into your role here that you've made a a personal relationship or a touch point with the employee base? Absolutely. That's one of the key elements of my role. Yes, clearly I'm responsible for the business and take that quite personally. But I'm also responsible for being the best communicator I can be to our organization and create those personal relationships. And whether they be in the field with our coaches and guide, or whether they be internal, we are uh, a believer in constant communication and whether it's local town halls, global town halls, um, because unless we're all aligned against a common vision and accountable for what we want to achieve, we're not going to be able to achieve it. So once you align, I guess, the purpose and the culture, you kind of set forth what the culture goal is, at that point, are you going around and kind of making sweeping changes to the internal personnel? So I know that when we had talked last, um, you know, you mentioned that toxicity inside of the organization is just, I mean, you have to get rid of it immediately. So <laughs> were you, were, were people hiding from you and, and kind of worrying about their, their positions and their jobs? Yeah. Or like, what, was, what did yeah. that feel like and how did you clean up yeah. the internal org to, to then be rolling, I hope nobody hides right? from me. I mean, fortunately, <laughs> you build a reputation over the course of your career on the type of leader that you are. And I believe in accessibility, transparency, vulnerability, and you have to be able to connect with people. Now, what you also, though, is you have to assess, do you have the right organizational structure? Do you have the right talent in the right places for where you need to go? Um, we don't have toxicity within our organization. And I think our purpose and what we do has a lot to do with it. And I think it's why we attract the talent that we do. Um, but we did have to make some organizational changes. And we had great talent within the organization, but we had to bring in talent from outside the organization. Uh, so for example, we've brought on a significant amount of technology and product talent. We just announced the formation of a tech hub in Toronto to further facilitate that. Um, so you're constantly having to look at, do you have not only the tools, but the talent to execute with those tools? Um, and I think any organization has to look at themselves every single day and say, am I building the right organization for the future? Absolutely. So now that you have the internal org kind of galvanized and marching in the right or the same direction, um, you were quoted saying, as we aim to become the world's partner in wellness, we are continuously looking for ways to make wellness more accessible. Now, an approach that you've had in the past and an approach that seems that you're journeying down now is just to, is to really uh, invest and take a, make a concentrated effort on investing in innovation. Um, previous to you entering the organization, um, they would make one or two uh, technological advances, I guess, or investments into innovation every like two to three years. Um, since I think I could probably count, I can count six or seven off the top of my head. I'm sure you probably have 15. Um, what criteria are you looking for when you're looking to invest in innovation? Like what are the different benchmarks that it has to serve in order for it to catch your attention to pilot? So to your point, I think it's really important, and I think it's not just for us, but any brand today, you have to marry technology plus meaning to deliver and help people live greater connected lives. Because technology for technology's sake is not going to do anything. What is its purpose? So when we said we want to be the world's partner in wellness, and you've heard me say if you have Amazon for shopping or Netflix for entertainment or Spotify for music, we want to be your everything app for yeah. wellness and whatever that healthy life means to you. And so what we said we needed to do if we were going to deliver on that is create a complete ecosystem of wellness. So in the last year alone, not only do we have the best nutrition program on the planet with the launch of Freestyle, proprietary barcode scanner, we have one of the largest food databases in the world, but now we took the same science approach, and science is behind everything 
that informs what we do, mm -hmm. to fit points around activity, also with the integration of audio fitness with Aptiv. We have a whole experience around mindset and mindfulness, both our own content and the integration of Headspace. Mm -hmm. We launched our first loyalty and rewards program, which does not reward you for spending money. It rewards you on all those things you do on behalf of your health and you can get wellness wins. We have Connect, which is our digital community, which is one of the most powerful assets we have. We recently launched Connect Groups because today you want community that can align. So young moms or college students at any different life stage. We have 24-7 chat with a coach. And all of that's been built to provide people from the time they wake up to the time they go to bed support to allow them to achieve whatever their health goals are. And all of this so is So just being, a little bit of yeah, work. No, you come in with a hard hat in the morning, right? To work <laughs> every day. I mean, this is all but being concurrently know, we, built. We have an incredible team. And I see Michael Isot, who's mm -hmm. out there, who's our chief technology officer. You know, he truly believes in agile innovation. He mm -hmm. believes in you have to have the processes as well as the capabilities to be able to continue to iterate and execute um, and be testing and learning at the same time. And you have to build that into the culture. You know, similarly to, um, you know, previously at HSN, I mean, you're working with a legacy brand that was, I mean, in its identity, in its brand name said, wait, not the more macro lens of health and wellness, but wait. And to make that transition, I mean, I, it's, it's such an interesting, delicate process. I'm wondering if you think it's better that it started actually narrow and it expands now wide. Is that a better approach in general if you were going to start it so, all over 55, 56 years ago? Look, you don't make a decision to do anything with a legacy brand lightly. Um, we've been transforming lives for 56 years and there's a huge respect and acknowledgement of that. However, you also have to be cognizant of how consumer behavior has changed over those past 56 years. Mm -hmm. um, and we did a massive uh, research study, both quantitatively and qualitatively, around people's perception of what healthy living is. And you don't, we never will abdicate our science and our ability to help people with healthy weight loss, but they want more than that today. A, they want to define what healthy means to them. B, they want something that is livable and sustainable. Mm -hmm. C, we're the biggest proponents of body positivity in the world. We don't tell people what they should weigh yeah. or what their you know, scores are. We literally ask, What's your why and what does healthy mean to you? And we will help you get there and give you the ecosystem of support. And that's very important to people. Um, they also, we know, they want community. Mm -hmm. um, they want to be inspired, not just educated. Um, so everything we've built has been informed by what is going to support our efforts. And that's why our retention is at an all-time high. Our brand relevancy is at an all-time high. And we're really looking for the mark of WW to be that stamp of healthy living, that stamp of credibility. So what's incredible is now you have four, like over four and a half million users on your mobile platform. 30% uh, of which your users are actually now going to in-person community events. And you are a company, as you mentioned, that's rooted in community. In fact, it was started at like an apartment uh, you know what I mean? Like yeah. as, as, a, as a support group for as people that a, just... As a young fem you know, a female entrepreneur. Um, look, that platform of over 4.6 million members that they have at their fingertips every day, but 1.6 million also choose to want face-to-face -face interaction. We still have 30,000 workshops a week where people come and they want to be inspired and inspire one another. And we're working to 30, integrate- 30,000 a week. A week. And we're insane. working very hard to integrate our technology to make that a seamless experience uh, as well, which is of critical importance. And then we just created and announced 
uh, a new area of our company, a new division, um, and we hired someone to come in and run. That's all going to be about community activation, events, and content. Mm -hmm. So a whole new area for us to bring people together in different ways. So a big part of, I guess, that the community initiative is also expanding um, who the audience is or who, who the, the, customer, the consumer is. And um, you know, currently, I, I guess the majority is a, is a women base. And you're looking to expand that, of course, um, from the socioeconomical standpoint, from gender diversity, from racial diversity. Uh, what types of initiatives are you doing there beyond, of course, there's some public signals, l including the brand ambassadors that you're bringing on yeah. and the whole influencer network. That's of critical, critical important to us. And when we set forth our new vision around democratizing wellness as part of that, uh, we knew that we needed to touch a lot of people. We also reassessed, so I get asked all the time who our you know, greatest competition is, and our greatest competition is people thinking they can get healthy themselves, and we want to be their partner. And to your point, diversity is age, gender, race, ethnicity, geography, life stage. So how do we become relevant and partner across all of those areas? Um, so around the globe, um, we've built uh, ambassadors and influencer bases that really recognize diversity. Mm -hmm. um, our tools and how we present ourselves, our marketing and our efforts um, have already created impact. Um, and we're seeing a much more diverse audience for who is coming to our brand. Mindy, I want to thank you for being with us on stage. If it weren't for a fire, um, we would uh, be here all day. But, I did um, not start that. <laughs> I know. I appreciate the time, as always. <laughs> um, I know that the, the audience, of course, that they and we appreciate. Oh. Attention, please. The fire alarm has been activated. This is so good. Well, thank you guys for all staying here and risking your lives with us for the Bellwether Culture Podcast. Yeah. This has Somehow been Pub and I always Ball. get attached and, to drama. Uh, and along with Mindy Grossman, <laughs> please give it a, her thank a warm you. applause. <laughs> and we're going to be recording another session in studio and stitching it together. If you guys go to Bellwether, B-E-L-L-W-E-T-H-E-R, <laughs> Culture on Spotify or iTunes, you can subscribe. We have one episode up there, and the rest of the season will be released on June 17th. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.